very much. Uh, my name is Alison Irwin. For those of you who don't know me, I'm also a committee member of the Paul Ireland Society. Um, we have with us this morning uh, the acting ambassador uh, of the Nepalese Embassy in London. So I'd like to call on Mr. Tej Bahadur Chantry to come and say a few words for us now. Chairman of Nepal Island Society, the PC, Sivan, CEO of XNF, NIS members, friends from, from London, we have two friends from London and uh, Denmark, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, Namaste and good evening to you all. I am delighted and privileged to be part of this conference jointly with Nepal Embassy, Nepal Island Society, XNA, <coughs> Engineers Without Border, and many charity organizations. I am glad to see all of you here, along with more than a dozen speakers, I think, today, representing different organizations. <coughs> On behalf of the Embassy of Nepal, I extend my sincere thanks to all delighted attendees for honoring us with your kind presence at this event of national importance. We cherish your presence as an expression of profound goodwill and strong solidarity towards the people and government of Nepal. I hope with this conference we will be able to create a platform for interaction, networking and information sharing for all international non-governmental organizations and individuals based in Ireland who have been working in Nepal and have an interest in Nepal. Ladies and gentlemen, I will cover a little bit update of Nepal tragedy, constitution, political development in Nepal, and the investment, tourism, and and others. At this great conference, I feel crucial to update you all regarding Nepal tragedy of last year and its reconstruction phase. As we all know, Nepal struck huge tragedy last year. That devastating earthquake took about 9,000 people, leaving over 21,000 people injured. Moreover, the damage caused by the devastating earthquake and its subsequent aftershocks, especially with respect to poverty, is incalculable. Our historical and cultural monuments of archaeological on the country's sorry, significance have badly damaged, equally allowing are the adverse impact on the country's economy and pursuit of development goals. According to <coughs> Government data, the devastating earthquake resulted economic loss of about $10 billion in Nepal, which is nearly half of the country's GDP. Moreover, the authority estimated that $7 billion for rebuilding and reconstruction. For Nepal as being one of the poorest countries in the world, rebuilding its revised economy will be particularly difficult after it has suffered years of slow growth. Now let me say briefly a few words about reconstruction phase. Nepal has been working very hard on reconstruction and building back. Nepal confronted profound <coughs> challenges last year. The devastating earthquake and the obstruction of supplies uh, blocked by India. The continuing strike and disruption of supply for five months at the southern border has caused greater economic, social and psychological losses than even the earthquake. Nepal has not faced a natural catastrophe of this scale for over 80 years. We have a lot of outpouring support, goodwill, affection and understanding from government and friendly people of the Ireland and all friendly nations in the aftermath of earthquake last year has deeply touched the heart of the Nepalese and are still afresh in our mind. 
as we have ahead most challenging tasks of reconstruction, we look forward to receiving extended support and solidarity from the Irish government and friendly people of Ireland. The government of Nepal commends the international community and the police diaspora for the spontaneous and generous support extended to Nepal at the hour of national tragedy. The government of Nepal established Nepal Reconstruction Authority on December 2016, acting urgency to rehabilitation and reconstruction. The delay in reconstruction was highly triggered by the climatic and geographical challenges of Nepal, need of forming legal laws in relation to reconstruction, focus on preparedness of long-awaited constitution of Nepal, which we promulgated last September, and painful situation of blockade and supply disruption in Nepal. The National Reconstruction Authority has overcome all of the challenges and it is now on the extreme speed of reconstruction and development. Nepal Reconstruction Authority is a national body that has extraordinary jurisdiction. The National Reconstruction Authority is set up to promptly complete reconstruction work of the structure affected in a sustainable, resilient, and plan manner and to promote national interest and provide social justice by making resettlement and translocation of persons and families displaced <coughs> by the earthquake. The authority is given five years to complete reconstruction works and additional one year if substantial job will be true. I am confident that Nepal will exert its unified efforts to build a strong and resilient nations that is resistant to disaster. Last week, we commemorated the Earthquake Memorial Day. On this commemorative day, inauguration of reconstruction drive was also symbolically inaugurated several damaged structures in various places worst affected by the earthquake, including Kathmandu in Dharara, Swaimbunath, and uh, uh, also the, lead, the foundation stone for the construction of Quake Memorial Park at Bar Park in Gorkha. Our Prime Minister has been expressed his commitment to carry out the reconstruction of damaged structures in a fast and effective manner. The government has also given priority to the handicapped, helpless and single women in the reconstruction drive. Till now, government has received only one-fourth of the financial support placed $4.1 billion by the donors. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me take minutes to brief you in relation to Nepal tourism. I think uh, the, the, the DPC already uh, spoke about it. Tourism is an attractive sector for investors in Nepal. Nepal is gifted with beauty of nature adventures and treasures of culture and civilization, making tourism as a leading business of Nepal. However, the occurrence of tragedy in Nepal last year also severely affected our tourism business. I feel glad to say that we are gradually checking back to our level in tourism business with all national and international support with the spirit of the message that Nepal is safe to visit after earthquake. I am also thankful to British Prince Harry, to, who visited Nepal last month, gave a good message for encouraging and flourishing tourism business. The follow-up, I believe that if Nepal received a high-level visit from Ireland as well, the flow of Irish tourists to Nepal can also be increased. On this occasion, on behalf of the government of Nepal, I would like to thank Irish government for lifting their partial travel restriction last year and request has been made for complete travel lifting for encouraging more <coughs> citizens to visit Nepal at the hour of need. I request you all to lobby in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, today at this optimal opportunity, I also find it crucial to note that Nepal has huge fertile area of trade and investment. Since the government has limited capacity, it is seeking private sector, domestic and foreign to invest on its resources, produce goods and services, and create jobs. Nepal offers wide and attractive incentives for foreign investment in almost every sector, including infrastructure, 
हाइड्रो पावर टूरिज्म सर्विस सेक्टर आईटी एजुकेशन हेल्थ माइनिंग एग्रो बेस्ड इंडस्ट्री एसेट्रा मोर ओवर विद द प्रमोलगेशन अफ न्यू कन्स्टिट्यूशन नेपाल हाज नाउ इम्बाक्ट अन द न्यू पैथ अफ पीस डेमोक्रेसी इकोनोमिक डेवलपमेंट एंड प्रस्पेरिटी द कन्स्टिट्यूशन इज सेल्फ लेज द पोलिशी फाउंडेशन अफ इनकरेजिंग फरेन कैपिटल एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल इन्वेस्टमेंट इन एरियाज अफ इम्पोर्ट सब्सिट्यूशन एंड एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन मोर ओवर द कंज्यूमर मार्केट इज ग्रोइंग इनर्वसली with the rise in middle class population in Nepal. With this connection, I am confident that we will be able to discuss the ways and means of forging partnership between Nepal and Ireland at this conference today as well. I would also like to note all that Nepalese people are eager and ready to contribute to their part for the sake of economic growth, development and prosperity to sustain and consolidate the hard-fought political gains. Having updated regarding the tourism, trade and investment and reconstruction phase of Nepal, I feel confident that this conference will be a significant step for creating an easy platform for Ireland for beginning two countries' resources, knowledge and experience to help each other immensely in strategic planning and make informed decisions for carrying out socio-economic development projects in Nepal. I hope with this connection, Nepal will get help, support and advice for post reconstruction, for flourishing tourism, trade, investment as well as for strengthening Nepal-Ireland relationship closure. Finally, I would also like to take this opportunity once again, thanks all the, all the attendees of the conference for their, their presence. Also, special thanks to Nepal-Ireland Society Accenade, Engineers Without Border, and all incorporated sponsors for their effort and support for making this conference successful. On behalf of the government and myself, I would also like thank, to take this privilege to acknowledge and thank Nepal Island Society and tireless effort of President Mr. Tibes and his all teams and the police diaspora for connecting Nepal and Ireland both at people level and government level along with the recent establishment of Nepal-Ireland alliance also. I am hopeful that the effort will further help in socio-economic development of Nepal through the strong ties at the organization level. I would also like to wish organizers and Mr. Tibet Sakya all the best for his aim of organizing a similar conference, Europe conference next year. The Embassy of Nepal is always forward to provide necessary help and assistance for this cause. I wish the conference will be a success. Thank you very much.